Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I have now returned from Tenerife and um, I'm back in my normal place, so I hope that the sound quality will be better than it was in yesterday's video. Now we've got a puzzle that has been recommended to us, well, probably two dozen times, I think. It's, it's of that order. It's called Spot the Difference. And it's by Marty Sears. Um, and I was amused. I looked it up in Logic Masters Germany before I turned on the webcam. It has a 100% approval rating. And the comments are eulogistic, as you'd expect. But one of them was something like, uh, you know, with this puzzle, you have to be a genius to have set it. So there you go, Marty. <laughs> uh, somebody in the comments on Logic Masters has revealed what we all think of you. Um, the rules of this, are, I'll read them in a moment or two's time, but they are intimidating that's probably the best adjective i've got for describing them um and yeah i'll read the rules in a moment or two's time got a few things to tell you about though before that um uh chance of sonar that we we um the day before yesterday we attempted to finish it we failed um if we got quite close we believe but there will be another stream it'll probably be after christmas now between christmas and new year um and from the comments in the in the chat we might only have about half an hour to go and if if, if the stream does fall short of being a decent length stream we'll, we'll we'll come up with something else to do for the other hour and a half um but yeah thanks for joining us if you joined us for that i'll try and remember to put a link on the screen to that one um our kickstarter should be delivered tomorrow um, that is the that's the latest the latest info I have. So if you if you're looking out for it, check your inboxes tomorrow. Uh, over on Patreon, um, my solves of the 100 snack doku puzzles, literally all 100 of them are available. Um, so so do have a look at those. They are wonderful, wonderful four by four puzzles as an introduction to variant Sudoku and the tricks that you need to solve some some of the variant puzzles. Those puzzles are fabulous. Um, well, we're going to draw the winner soon. Um, and then I've got a few birthdays to catch up on. So I'm sorry if I missed your birthday. And this is this is my catch up. Um, Asha. Asha turned 11 on the 19th of December. And I know this, Asha, because your brother Joel wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. I love hearing about young viewers. It is fan it's just fantastic to me that we are followed by so many young people um next to cameron who has turned the big 3-0 big 30 um over there in maryland i got the pronunciation right didn't i i think i did um i know it's your 30th birthday because cat wrote to us um and uh very amusingly said that you have you indulge in polite discussions about who is going to get to use the ctc mug on any given day um as <laughs> I love I love the idea of that conversation. But Cameron, happy birthday. I hope you get chocolate cake. And then Theo. It might be Theo, though. I'm not sure. Um, but Madeline wrote to us down there in Argentina um, to say that you'd appreciate a shout out. And you're a big follower of the channel. And apparently you, the two of you do watch together sometimes. But sometimes Madeline might watch, want to watch a TV show. But you will uh, you will correctly choose sudoku as, as the preferred option so teo theo not sure which but thank you for watching and <laughs> happy birthday um now magnia magnia i'm sorry I, i'm late with your birthday your birthday was on thursday and you turned five um and um apparently you asked for a happy birthday from bobbins which is how i'm referred to in the household quite right too and magnia i hope you had a great birthday i hope you had lots of chocolate cake um the message came from from your mum hilda your stepdad dave and your three-year-old little sister maya um i hope all of you were able to celebrate suitably now i'm going to change tack a bit here i'm going to talk to you about we do get some incredibly moving correspondence on the channel. Um, it's always pretty humbling when, when we get these sorts of emails. And I got an email from, from Blake in New Zealand recently, and I wasn't sure about reading it out, but I think I, think I should. Um, it, it, this hits hard, believe me. Um, and 
I hope you'll indulge me for a couple of minutes by listening, because I think that Blake's message is it's it's sad, but it's also incredibly powerful. Um, so this is what Blake wrote to us. Hi, guys. This is going to be a long and strange email, and I'm not entirely sure where to start, but it boils down to this. Thank you. When I was born, my older brother Ryan had just been diagnosed with a rare genetic disability called spinal muscular atrophy type 2. The joys of the genetic lottery meant that I was quickly diagnosed with the same condition. My brother was expected to have mere months to live, my own expiration date being expected to be no more than two years. I guess by the fact I'm writing this, you can tell the expected lifespan was just a touch surpassed. Our family made sure to look after us as best they could. My parents were further surprised in that my mum was going to give birth to triplets nearly two years after my birth. The triplets, Kendall, Melissa and Reese, thankfully sidestepped that genetic lottery and became an increase to the support foundation Ryan and I depended upon. Living in New Zealand and because of my mother's bullheadedness, Ryan and I would go on to lead full academic lives. We attended public schools with all the other kids, received good grades, both became prefects at Westlake Boys High School, and both graduated with university degrees. During our schooling years, we spent months at a time in hospital for spinal surgery, hip surgery, pneumonia, and countless medical tests. It was during this time that I discovered a fondness for puzzles, particularly Sudoku. While I have never had nor ever will have a mental aptitude for numbers, there was something about these puzzles that just brought a certain level of certainty to a life of constant unknowns. You see, the doctors were good enough to update our life expectancy with every hospital visit. Well, as I mentioned, those life expectancy expectations were surpassed to the point that they finally stopped guessing. Ryan and I would go on to flat together in 2013, and we have spent the last decade learning how to live independently while being entirely physically dependent, about as big a conundrum as a Schrodinger cell. About two years ago I stumbled upon CTC, and I've watched most videos since. However, your videos have meant so much more to me this year. In March, Ryan got sick. It was just one illness too many, and he passed away. I've been struggling through these last nine months. We relied on one another in a way few others do. We couldn't be the one to physically help the other, but we could be the shelter from the storm. We knew we weren't alone in whatever we were going through, and an understanding ear was ever just across the hallway. The last nine months has felt like a bowler playing cricket without his fielders. I know I'm not alone. I know there's support in the stands, but I miss my teammate. Still in that time, CTC has felt like one of those supporters in the stands. These puzzles have brought a certain level of certainty to a life of constant unknowns. The birthday wishes have even acted as a surprising bulwark against depression, reminding me cons consistently that happiness doesn't end. It was my birthday on the 3rd of December and I was going to write something then, but I just couldn't bring myself to. So instead of asking for a call out, I just want to say Merry Christmas and thank you for being a necessary reprieve. Sometimes well, it's, um, it's, yeah, it is very humbling to know that these videos have an effect beyond just helping people to solve a puzzle. And Blake, our thoughts go out to you on the loss of Ryan. Um, I don't think any of us can empathize with, well, yeah with what, what you must go through um, and what a support he must have been for you. Um, now Blake does write poetry um, over on Instagram. I'll put a link to his Instagram feed under this video, but I thought it seemed 
Nice. I, I read a lot of Blake's poetry, actually, over the last few days. I really like it. So I, I chose one of the poems and I thought I might just read it to you now. Um, I don't know what this poem's called, though, so forgive me for that. But, it, but this is the poem. I curse my body regularly. I dream of form transcended. I hope for the impossible. Pray for broken, mended. I have spent my life living disability and forgot that every now and then there's more that I can be. But on a night like this, when the sun refuses bed, when cicadas sing into the dusk and when the skies bleed red, when there's someone holding to the other side of hope, the new path on this journey takes a gentle southern slope. That is a beautiful poem, Blake. You are a talented guy. And um, as I say, Merry Christmas to you. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that message. I think it will mean a lot to hundreds, if not thousands of people who watch this video and um, check out the comments. I'm sure you'll find um, you'll find a lot of support there. And yeah. Anyway, before I get too emotional, I'm going to I'm going to do some solving and distract myself, as is ever the way. Let us have a look at Spot the Difference by Marty Sears, and I will read you the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply, so we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, column, and three by three box. Connect each pair of matching coloured spots with a snake. Snakes may only move orthogonally through the grid, not diagonally. They may, this, this part of the rules terrifies me. They may touch each other and themselves, but cannot share cells. So what does it mean for a snake to move orthogonally? It basically means it, it means that when the snake moves, it has to cross an edge. So it can, let me see if I've got the pen tool. Um, so a snake could move like that. That's fine, but it can't move like that because it only these two cells, this one and this one, only touch each other at a point. That is not an orthogonal movement. But the problem here is that the snakes can... What does it say? The snakes can touch each other and themselves, but they cannot share cells. Okay, so they can't cross, can they? What that, that does mean that they can't... So they can't do that because this cell would be in both snakes. Okay, but they can touch each other and themselves. So they could do, they could do weird and wonderful things like that. So normally in Sudoku, the snakes aren't allowed to touch themselves. Um, but here uh, it's actually made, it's a lot clearer if I draw the line to show it, isn't it? That that's, that's very possible. If I was to do that by shading, it would look very strange, but that is a possible movement of this snake, I think. Um, anyway, let's get rid of all that gubbins that I've um, uh, ornamented the grid with. Um, each pair of adjacent digits along a snake has the same difference, hence the title of the puzzle, Spot the Difference. Um, but this difference value may be different for different snakes. So if this snake differs by three every time it moves, so if that was one, that was four, that was seven, that was four, that was one. Uh, don't know where you, you might be able to go there. Not sure. I can't remember what I started with. But if that was the case, that would be a difference of three snake. This snake could be a difference of um, two or one, I suppose, or four five um well five is probably very difficult but yeah that it we can have we just have to have the same difference when we move from cell to cell um a gray square contains an even digit okay so we've got some of those sprinkled in the grid and a black dot connects two digits with a one to two ratio i.e one digit is double the other so we've got a couple of those in the grid. So if that was a two, this would have to be a four or a one. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, so what can we see immediately about the various snakes here? I'm looking at that one straight away and suggesting it probably has to go there because... Yeah, I mean, if this yellow one 
loops over the orange one. And it doesn't matter what path it takes, or how circu circuitous that path is. But if it goes like that, this cannot, can never touch this without crossing its friend, its, its, its yellow snake friend. And it's not allowed to cross it because it can't occupy the same cells as it. And it only moves orthogonally from cell to cell. So it can't sort of jump across a diagonal or something. Or uh, no, it just can't do it. I mean, it's very clear. So that tells us that yellow has to drop down to there. I suppose we don't know that it then just immediately finishes, do we? It can start, it could go off on a, it could go off a wandering, as snakes are prone to do. Especially, what was it, Hissing Sid? Yeah, I've, I read that out actually in the, in the book, book poems. When Hissing Sid and the evil snake kept the woodland folk awake in fear and trembling every night in case he gave someone a bite. Uh, <laughs> um... And hissing Sid, his eyes are popping into the woodland night, went hopping. Look, stop it, Simon. Stop it. Um, right, I'm not doing very well here. Blue, blue has to get out of the corner. It has to go there, doesn't it? Because it can't go diagonally, so it must go there. Purple, no idea. Green. Hmm, actually, no. Green... I was wondering whether green went above or below. I was going to say it's hard for it to go below the orange, but it's not impossible. It doesn't work the same way as with the yellow and the orange. If green goes low to get to that the other uh, the other green, whoopsie, if it goes that way, orange can just nip over the top, can't it? So, and if green goes that way, This is very peculiar, actually. Ah. No. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, I've spotted one thing. Blue can't go over the top. Blue can't go that way. Because then to get out, blue's going to have to come round here. And however, it, whatever route it takes, these oranges can't connect, can they? So, ah, <laughs> I'm having a nightmare with my mouse. Um, so, blue... Blue comes down here or down here somehow. Where's my blue gone now? I thought I'd put a blue in there, down there. Um, have I missed some rules here? Uh, let me just, I'm just going to have a quick look at the rules again. We've got snakes made. Snakes are very flexible. The only thing the snake can't do is occupy the same cell as another snake and go diagonally. It, it, otherwise, it's an open field for the snakes. And the snakes have the same difference. Okay. Um, so literally, we know almost nothing about any of the snakes. We know that blue has an even digit as its second cell. But we, whoopsie! Um, but we don't know. We don't know whether its first cell, if its first cell was even, then okay. So then the difference on the on the blue snake would be an even difference, and all the ah all the cells on this snake would be even. Ah, yeah, okay. Bishop's colour is that on? Oh, not the same bishop's colour. That must be important. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a ridiculous idea. Okay, so I can now, I can now, I think, understand how you start the puzzle. Which is classic Marty, this. It's classic Marty. It's it's the sort of thing that I think Simon of five years ago would not have spotted very quickly at all. Um, right, so what I'm thinking is... Uh, 
what I'm thinking is, how do I articulate this in a way that's a way that's clear? Um, why was I looking at bishops' colours? Well, it's because. That's how the <laughs> this is a really fatuous thing to say, but it, it's because of that's how the snake moves. So if the snake. Um, if the if the snake has a difference of of one, so if, if these differed by one, it's still necessary that the same bishop's color as this cell would be even uh, is, is that clear is that uh, so so what i'm saying is that it, if if this cell was on the blue snake which it might not be but if it was on the blue snake we wouldn't always know its parity because and that this is just a feature of of the nature of numbers um because if the difference along this 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 line is odd then I've got to in order to get to this square I'd have to go two odd movements this to this would be an odd jump or this to this would be an odd jump and then this to this would be an odd jump but the sum of two odd numbers is even so these these have the same parity if they're both on the snake now that's interesting it's very interesting in the context of the blue snake because that means any cell on the same bishop's color as this cell here that's on the blue snake is even but but the, the beautiful thing about this is that having worked out the snake doesn't go over the top here the blue snake doesn't go over the top in order to escape from the top of the grid it can't go through the green snake that's one of the rules of the puzzle it's got to go through either this cell or this cell or both but if we know it goes through one of these squares and they are not on the same bishop's color as this and these are obviously even digits that implies that when when we go to this bishop's colour or this bishop's colour, which will be the same as this bishop's colour, we're alighting on an even digit. So the step that takes us from, from this square to this square is going to be via an even digit because this is the second bishop's colour in the puzzle. Is that, that's, that's sort of, it's something I intuitively appreciate about how snakes move orthogonally. I hope that that makes it clear what um, I mean it's not it's not I don't know how I mean it must be useful but I don't know how useful it's going to be because we still haven't we still don't know we know that whatever the we know that this bishop's color differs from this bishop's color we know both are even so we know that this is an even moving snake but what we don't know is the path it takes. I don't even know which of these it goes through, which is a weirdity. So that cell in the corner is even. We've now worked out. Now actually, I was going to say that might be interesting because it does occur to me that to get out of box seven at all, I'm going to need now three even digits. Well, or four even digits yeah if I, if I don't go with alacrity if I if I go if I go all the way along row nine I could have something like two four six six eight and then I could change direction because I couldn't go anymore in row nine but this square would have to be extreme it would either have to be two four six eight or eight six four two but if I wiggle at all in box seven i'm going to use all the even digits in box seven for the snake just to get out of the box and in that situation that's still got to be an extreme digit so imagine the snake did that to get out that can't be four because what would this be 
if this is 4, this would have to be 2 or 6. Well, it, it couldn't be 2 because then that would be 4 again. So it would have to go 4, 6, and then this would have to be 8, and this would have to be 6 again. It just doesn't work if this is a middly digit. Right, so what we're now learning is that the corner digit is extreme within the even digits. The second digit is... Ah! Ah. Hmm. I'm wondering if I can extend my idea of um bishops moves. To to the um to the other digits. No, this might be too complicated. Four. If that's four. And this is on the snake. either has to be 8 or 4 again. If that's 4 and that is on the snake and we don't know it's on the snake but I'm just I'm just trying to I'm, I'm trying to go further than just saying it would have to be even which we've already proved. I'm trying to say that within the subset of digits 2, 4, 6 and 8 doesn't it always have to belong to the 4 or 8 set? It could never be six, could it? I mean, it could never be six because to get to this square, you're going to go an even number of steps from a four. And even if you go, you know, a very circuitous route, you're still going to go an even number of steps from a four. And that can never be to a six within the sequence. And it can never be to a two within the sequence. That is quite interesting. So. I don't know if we can use that. Um, hang on, and we don't know what this digit is either. So let me get rid of the, the digit in that square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's on the opposite dish bishop's color. So if that's right, if my theorem is right there, Then if that's, oh no, we don't know whether that's 2 or 8 though, do we? We don't know where this is going. Oh, bobbins, I don't know what to do. Uh, does this, this also have to be extreme though, does it? Is that the point? Maybe that's the point, that that has to be extreme. If that's 4 or 6, how do we get out of this box? We would go here. And then, aren't we always going to get a repeat? Or am I just, am I just um, living in cloud cuckoo land there? How do we get out of this box? Four, six, eight. And I can't go, I mean, the next, once I hit the extreme digit within the sequence, the next digit is forced on the sequence to be six, isn't it? And it can't go in any of those three positions. And that's if I try and speed out of the box. If I try and meander out of the box, I'm going to have even bigger problems because I'm not even going to have any flexibility to ever get out of the box again. Right, so that that is... 2 or 8 and okay so so these squares are 2 4 6 and 8 so we've used up quite a lot of real estate here ah of course well oh hang on hang on hang on hang on that, I have a lot of difficulty believing this digit can be even. 
Because if that's even, how do I get the blue snake out of box three? You can't do it. Because you you could come to this square safely, but you then can't go to a, a valid cell that could be an even digit. But, you, but the, the blue snake only moves on even digits. Right, so this digit is odd. It's one or three, which means this digit is two or six. And therefore, that can't be... Oh, is that true that it can't... Does that have to come into this or can it still... No, it can't meander now. There's no... Right, this is it. Right, sorry, I'm being very slow here. This digit has to go there. Because if it now meanders, it's a proper... It's because we've got so many even digits already allocated in box three. If we, if we take, come to this square, that's a fourth even digit. And we can never go to that square. So we can't go there. So the only option is to go here. And these two have to be... Um, well, actually, that's another point. Do they, they definitely have to be two apart, don't they? I've sort of been glossing over that because I've assumed that four is impossible. Yeah, I mean, if, the, if this was two, six, then that has to go straight back to two again. Yeah, so they're, they're two apart. And the only way that can be done is if that's eight, that's six. This is now not six or eight. But the next step from this six is going to have to be to a four, isn't it? In one of those two squares. So that's a two always. But is it on the path? Uh, well, if the two's on the path, it then goes back into a four, doesn't it? Because it's only got one option. So if we... So is this on the path? I think that's the best question. Because if that's on the path, the snake's going to do this. This is going to be a four. This is going to be a two. The two's going to have to then move on to a four. You can't put four there and you can't put four there. So that's off the path, which means this is on the path and this is four. It doesn't mean that this is on the path. It probably does mean it's on the path, but it doesn't mean for sure it's on the path. Let, uh, let's draw. How should we do this? Should we do it? I think probably I'm going to use the line tool. I'm going to do it like that just because the the snake can touch itself orthogonally so it's probably easier to for me to see that if we do that so let's um even digits are what this can move on so we should should keep an, a track of even digits now if this goes here is that a problem or not that's a three that's something we can definitely say by black dot logic. Um, now, let me think. <laughs> if we go there, we've got to go down into a four. Then we can't go there, so we'd have to go down into a six. Then we'd have to go here because we can't go to eight or four there as so we go there and then we are then we're we're broken aren't we i've got nowhere to go i need to put a six into one of those squares okay so you can you can sort of see we don't go into this square it's quite difficult to see it but it is true and it's because the, the path of the snake is then utterly forced it has to go four we can never go into six or eight in this column so then we'd have to go six because we can't put two here uh, oh no, hang on, I've spot, I didn't spot the possibility. If that's four, that could be two, and that might be fine, and my phone is buzzing. Um, but then, oh no, that doesn't work. Sorry, that doesn't work for a different reason. If we go four, two, four, two in its own special deadly pattern, this two has to go to a four now that's not that four, and it can't get one. So that doesn't work. Whoa, this is this is complicated though. It really is. So the next path is to here with a two. And now the next is to a four, which is not there. Let's make that blue. Um, so the four, if the four, oh, that's beautiful. Right, the four is not here after the two, because if it is, how does the snake get out of this column? It can't get out. All of, oh Yeah, okay, this is how to do this. All of these are odd digits now by a process of Sudoku. 
outrageous. 34 minutes into the video. I suppose we had a long introduction today. But that, that, that must be true, mustn't it? If this is four, we then have to go down here somewhere and we can't, we can't get across to these even digits here. So we must go there. That must be a four. Now there's probably a reason it either has to or doesn't have to go there. The next digit from the four, it can't be a two here, it can't be a two here, it can't be a two here. So the next digit is a six, which can't be here. So it's a six here or a six here. And so if that's a six, that's a three then. So then we'd have to find we'd have to find an eight. Um, but if we have an eight there, then we then we're in trouble. No, that, okay. If if we go there with a six, we definitely don't go to an eight here, because if that's an eight, I've now got all the even digits in row four again, so I can never cross row four again. So I can't start going up and getting a six here because I can't get down again after that. And the digit after eight is always six and it would have to be a six in one of those. And if the six is here, again, I can't cross down the grid because there's no even digits left to take. So the only way that this is a six is if this is an eight. Um, that's... I don't know if that works or not. That might work. Feels quite difficult, but I'm not I'm not actually able to rule that out, I don't think. So what I'm looking at is that going up into eight. Then we need a six, obviously, which has to be here. It's all forced. Then we need a four or an eight. Now we could have a four here, although we're penning the snake in, so we don't go there actually. The snake couldn't get out. Um, my phone is now buzzing. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, so we'd have to go down to an eight here. And now again, we've got all our even digits. In fact, we've got all the even digits in both of these rows now. So all of this would have to be odd. All of those would be odd. Oh, and then, well, then where would we take the six after that? Hang on. No, that's yes, absolute nonsense. You can't do it. It's really complicated, actually, to rule to rule everything out is complicated. But you can now see if you go up here with eight, you've got to go six here. And then because this now is the only escape for this, because we can't go up here, we can't put four here. We have to put eight as the next digit. It has to be there, but that needs a six, which it can't have. So in fact, you can rule out this is the next digit, but it was complicated to do that. So that's the next digit, and that's got to be a six, which is surprising, but welcome. So the six now, if it takes that digit, that's got to be eight. If it takes that digit, that digit could be four. <laughs> ah! four and six live in a, a hole down there three is definitely odd oh i suppose look we've done all the we've done all the even digits in box three um hmm so it must be something to do with this black dot, knowing knowing in which direction it therefore moves. How do we do that? It is actually my other idea is working as well. Oh no, that hang on, that's that's not working there. That's nonsense. That was nonsense what I was about to tell you. This is not on the snakes. So we can't apply the rule. The the, the sort of diagonal bishop's colour of the even snake having to either so what i'm saying is that this diagonal here if anything on this bishop's color is on the snake it is a four or an eight similarly if anything is on this bishop's color and is on the snake it is a two or a six 
and that was the sort of theory that we were thinking about earlier so actually can I get that one hang on let me just see what bishop's color this is on right yes we can so what I'm claiming is that that is a four um, because I'm claiming that if we did make this a six because every cell on this diagonal then has to be an even number of steps away you couldn't you can't get to four on it with an even number of steps from that position you can try it if you like but you won't be able to do it <laughs> it's just not the way maths works um, so that that is a four which means that is a two which means we have to then go into a six in one of those squares and that's fine isn't it that's fine I presume that can be a six yeah that's fine that's that's because it's got the correct parity working now um, So if this is the next digit on the snake, oh, I don't know. I don't find this very intuitive as to how I'm meant to just know now where to go next. Let's try two, four, six, and eight there. That's definitely even. It's not an eight. Four as ah, a two, two in one of two places in box four is in one of two places in box nine. We worked out the snake didn't go there, at least not immediately, didn't we? So we've got to figure out. But if it goes here, that could be a four. And then that couldn't be two, so that could be four, eight. Maybe there's more of a problem with it going there because that would have to be an eight. Then we'd have to go there for a six, wouldn't we? We'd have to go eight, six, and this couldn't be three, six. Um, hmm. I'm trying to understand how I'm meant to make a choice about this or perhaps what we're meant to do is to look at another line do I want to do that maybe not immediately but it does occur to me if I can work out the parity of this One, two, three, one. Let me just think about that. So if I'm sure that's how you have to do this, you've got to. It's it's all about bishops' colours. Um. Okay, so if that's on the snake, we know that that's a four or an eight by bishops' colour, don't we? And that's exactly what the line is telling us. So that would be four or eight. This square here, if this was eight, this would be four. So it would have to be four. That's the only way that the, 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 this continues. Now this has to be eight now because it can't be two. Can't put four, two here. And then I have to put... Then I have to put two or six as the next digit here and what's the problem with that and I hear you chorus there's no problem with that Simon it's absolutely fine it might be fine I mean if, if it's six as the next digit it couldn't go there so it would have to go here and then you'd have to find a place for a four or an eight. But you could even come there then. So you could do a little wiggle and come six, eight. I know then you could no, then you get trapped again. Oh, there's all sorts of trappages possible, but none of them are very easy to see. 
What am I missing here, if anything? It might just be that it's very... I mean, it is meant to be a hard puzzle, this. I think it might be five stars out of five. I can't remember. There are a lot of comments. Some people saying it was sort of three plus stars. Some people saying it took them ages and ages. I think I'm, it feels like I'm going to be one of the people it takes ages and ages to crack this. Um, let me think. How do we do it? How do I do this? Why is this place so difficult? Um, this black dot, I think, is mocking me. I feel like it's telling me something that I can't quite, I can't quite capture in my brain. I mean, it would be. Is there a problem with? Oh yeah, okay. Maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's the similar problem to that actually. You have to get out of the box, don't you? Is that the problem? So I'm wondering if you go here. Do you have an issue? You might not do actually. I'm I'm not certain, but I think. I think what I need to focus on harder is how do we get out of the box in a way that doesn't break the world. So what we're saying is if we come here, we know this is a four, don't we? Because it can't be eight because eight would put four here. So we come here with a four and our challenge is now to get out of this box with even steps in a way that doesn't break the puzzle. Now. How do we do that? We clearly can't come to a two here, can we? I mean, the next digit is going to be two or six. So we, we can't come to two here because the next digit would be four and we've already got a four in the box and we can't come to six here. So if we do go to that cell, we have to go down. And we know from our knowledge of the world that this would be a two or a six then. Now, it's not going to be a two because if it's a two, the next digit again is four and you can't put four in any of those squares. So you would have to go six. So it's, it's a bit of a chain this, but this is at least allowing us to think about it. That then, uh, that one then's an eight, isn't it? Oh, this is getting tricky. So can we can we now disprove this movement, the next movement of the snake? That feels like it's the key. Is it possible? None of those squares can be four. So we have to put eight in. Only one of them can be eight. It's that one. And that breaks. Wow. That's quite hard to see, actually. You do have to extend that quite far. So what we're, what we're seeing is you have to go there. It then turns out your force there. You then need to put eight on it because four can't go anywhere anymore. You have to put eight there. And why is that a problem? Well, it's because the next digit on the snake has to be a six. And you can't put six here because of Sudoku. Goodness me, that's tricky. Right, but that's great. Because if the snake doesn't go there, it goes here. So that's eight. These are all odd now. So there's a two down, a two's in one of those. So that's odd. The next digit on the snake is a six that can't go here. Beautiful. So we get a free digit. This is not a three six pair anymore. So this is, this is either, hang on, let me, let me think about this. <laughs> let me firstly draw in the snake. Um, this is either, uh, it could be, we could put the two there actually if you had a one above it. I was going to say it couldn't have a two on it, but that's not true. It could have a two, but in only one way. Um, if it's got four on it, it has to be a four here with an eight above it, doesn't it? Um, okay, that doesn't. That doesn't appear to be very useful, actually. All right, so what's the next digit after this? Is that the next point that we have to consider? 
if we go up into this surely that's going to break because we're going to get stranded in the box aren't we we're going to go four then we're going to go two and then we're stranded so we definitely don't go up if we go to here that would have to be a four if we go down that could be a four but it could be an eight although eight's a little bit challenging because we then need to go to six which would have to be here wow okay um wow okay so maybe i've got to i've got to approach it from this side again can we say anything now about how we get out of the um so i'm just checking the time we have we've got guests arriving a bit later <laughs> this, this is obviously going to take me a long time uh, but i'm still fine um so if this is two four ah all right okay so the way i get out of box seven now is not by coming along the bottom row i can't go two four six eight because this square would be odd then and i have to fill all of those there are four even digits in sudoku so all of these would have to be even and i have five even digits in column seven which is impossible so if we go there we have to we have to wiggle we have to go two four six eight and then cut across here if we go there that's six we can't run into another snake so we'd have to ah we can never go here i didn't see this we can never go here because if we do go to this square specifically the next digit on the snake is an eight in one of these two squares. But if we go eight here, we can't go up. And if we go eight here, we have to go to six. So that doesn't work either. So, so in fact, we never go there. We always go here, but then we can't go here. So we have to go here. That's lovely. That is a bonus. So now we must go into a six here. We have a little flurry of activity. We've got two. Si yeah, OK, so we've got sixes on the snake, which are all in, in the right parity of um, of sort of bishop's colours and okay I'm not sure exactly what we do with that um, we could well we can we can oddify all of those that square is odd <laughs> by the fact it sees two four six and eight six in the middle ah oh no six in the middle column is in one of two places it could be a bit of sudoku that we have to do it's not in but it's not impossible six where does six go in box um nine it's only got one place it can live in does that mean four yeah so four's only got one place it can live in good grief what's that we don't know that oh no we do know we've done this columns parity so that's got to be that's got to be an even digit in the corner so all of these are now odd wow okay well, that's quite exciting um <laughs> it's, it's bizarre uh now come on what does it mean though i don't quite know yet uh we don't know did we work we worked out the snake didn't go up didn't we i think we did work that out because if it did go up it goes up into a four the next digit has to be a two and then we're stranded yes yeah, so we, we worked out we don't go up so we either go here which would have to be a four so that's one i'm just going to put that in the corner so i remember it so we either go to there with a four or we have to go down to a four or an eight. Um, which is all very well, but I don't know. That's not exactly what I was hoping for. Could we? Oh, sorry, if this is obvious to you then I apologise. 
I've got two in one of these. So I can never, the snake can never come in here because it could only take one of the two cells. So the snake never goes into, never crosses this boundary again. And the snake, oh, it's quite hard for the snake to, to get a four after this, but it could get one there. And then that could be a two or a six. Good grief. Okay, so we haven't actually, squeaky chair alert, but we haven't actually got very much further, I don't think. If that was 8-4, does that knock that digit out? Oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that can't be 8-4. Because I don't think this can go anywhere. Its next digit is 8. That's beautiful, actually. It's very simple and very beautiful. If that's 8-4, that literally cannot do anything. Because we worked out it couldn't go up into here because that would be a 2 and it would be broken. And if it doesn't go up to here which it doesn't that cell sees eight and four and that cell sees eight and four and they're the only digits that can continue on past the six so this is not eight four so it is two one so it's two one that square is blue there's a two in one of those squares um what does that mean <laughs> uh, there's a six in one of these squares <laughs> And I still don't think I know where this goes, which is infuriating. Oh, my phone. Um, um, oh, sorry, that's a message saying my guests are going to arrive half an hour earlier than we thought they were going to arrive. That will uh, be a problem, which means I've still got half an hour. That should be OK, uh, he says. <laughs> that That is bluster, by the way. I mean don't actually think this is going to be well it depends it might get very easy if we can if we can finish off all the even digits in the puzzle basically and we know that all the other snakes are odd odd stepping snakes then that feels like that would be very handy but I do admit that we haven't actually learned that for sure yet have we eight is in one of those squares I don't like my pencil marks here so do we know we know this if it's go if it goes ah no that's useful yeah the next digit from here from a six is a four or an eight isn't it and it, that can't be a four or an eight so it's definitely going there that is definitely the next movement of the snake which means that square is blue Now, can we improve upon that? Do we know which one it is? If it's four, then the next movement has to be into a two. Or, it can't be a four, can it? I don't think it can be. If that's a four, the next movement is into a six, which can't go there or there, or a two. Oh, the two could go there. Sorry, I didn't see that for some reason. I saw that couldn't be a two. But if that's a four, that has to be a two. And then you'd have to go to a four here. It doesn't quite break that cell. OK, so that's one possibility. It goes it goes four here. Two here. Four here. And that's a six. Now, if on the other hand, this is an eight, what does that mean? Then we have to go to a six. We can't get one. Yeah, you can't get to a six because six, six is ruled out. So it does, a, it does the first thing. It goes four, two, four. These are, that's a six at the top. That's not six. We've got loads of bluenesses in this column. Um, now, where's, yeah, we do. Look at that. We get eight here. So we, we are getting most of the even digits. I can, those are odd. That's got to be a two by Sudoku which means that's even, that's odd. This is odd, one is odd, last time I checked. Now, uh, now what does that mean? We need cells that see. That square sees all of the even digits, so that is odd. 
No. <laughs> that didn't work out very well, did it? Um, the, okay, that square is all, sees all of the even digits, so that is odd. So the yellow snake now begins with odd, moves to odd, and finishes with odd. So it is stepping in, in an, it's jumping an even number each time, isn't it? So say if this was a one, that would have to be a three or a five. Um, well, it couldn't be a five, could it? I mean, a, a difference of four. I've, I've just sort of ruled that out in my head. It just feels such nonsense for, for something to go one, five, because its next option is nine or one. Oh, no, it can't say that. And it could, why couldn't it just be one, five, nine? It could be. Oh, bother. Oh, so sometimes the simplest thoughts are, oh, what about the purple snake? How does the purple snake get out? That's an easy win. It's got to go down. Purple snake. Oh, hang on. I've done. I've made a ricket. I was trying not to do that. I was trying to draw the purple snake going down. So the purple snake goes down. Now, do we know it, it goes, it finishes like that? Or can it, can it weave? I haven't got a clue. Um, but okay, here's right. So what we've just learned about this is that a three cell snake can be one, five, nine, but the, this couldn't be 159, could it? Well, so, if, well, I say that 159, then, then it couldn't extend there. It would have to go up, but then it wouldn't have any option for there. So this, this is a two-stepping snake. So if that's a one, three, five, seven, then that could be nine. That would work. Okay, um, okay, so we've done, okay, we've done the blue, let's actually make sure that we absolutely understand, it's hard for me to see, but I'm just thinking in terms of snakes running over other snakes, what that might mean. So how on earth do we do more? We need to know parity or something, do we? Or is it Sudoku? There's a two up here, four up here. Three, four, five, six looks a possibility, doesn't it, from that one? Is there a way to work out whether the green snake now goes over the top. If the green snake goes over the top of the orange snake, it does run into a six and it, well, that's it. Actually, that is a bit interesting. Let's just think about that for a second or two. So I'm saying that if the green snake goes over the top of the orange snake, it would have to take those three cells specifically. And why do I think that's interesting potentially? Well, obviously six is even and three is odd which means that the, the difference on this snake has to be an odd difference in order for us to have two parities along the snake. So we're either looking at steps of one, which is actually what I think it would be, because it looks like we could go three, four, five or something. Um, or actually, that if that's, that's, that's odd, isn't it? Um, well, I might be about to get interrupted, I'm afraid. Let me just... Hold fire for a moment. Maybe this hasn't happened yet, which gives me a, a small amount of hope. Um, okay, what was I thinking? Yeah, so it could be a difference of one, or it could be a difference of three, although three feels very difficult. Where, okay, where? how would you do a difference of three from this three? You'd have to go into a six. You couldn't do it. And a difference of five is lunacy, isn't it? Three, eight, and then we'd have to go back to three again which we could do there, but then we couldn't get another eight. So, so okay. So if, if green goes over the top of orange, then we know the snake is, green goes over the top of orange. It's a difference of one snake. It's definitely a difference of one snake. And therefore, how could this square? Well, we're gonna need even digits every two digits on the snake, aren't we? So that would have to be even.
It's a difference of one snake. That can't be eight, so that would have to be four. So we'd have to be in this sort of world, which looks very, very correct, doesn't it? Oh no, oh no, it's not correct. Ah, no, that doesn't work, I don't think. Hang on, hang on. Let's just, let me just step through that logic again. Because I thought that was all clean and then it broke. So my contention is, if green goes over the top of orange, there's definitely two parities on the green snake. Therefore, we're looking at an odd difference. We can't have a difference of three or five. So we're looking at a difference of one, which means that Every two steps along this snake, we get an even digit that is going to be two different from this digit, which means that digit, which can't be eight by Sudoku, has to be four. And if that's four, that digit is five. But if, but by Sudoku, this is four now. And now I need a four, I need to connect this, for, oh, unless I can go out somehow, can I? No, I can't. If I go down to a five here. So what I'm saying is there has to be a five or a three now. Actually, I haven't thought about that. Maybe there's a way of getting round by having a three. Well, the three would have to be there. And then I'd have to have a two. I can't have a two. There's nowhere for a two to go. It's very hard, actually, this to definitively prove absolutely that some an option doesn't work. You have to go through quite a lot of sort of a um, paraphernalia to definitively prove it. But I think I'm now comfortable that 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 green line can't go over the top. Now that must be useful then, doesn't it? So if the green line doesn't go over the top, it's got to go underneath somehow, which means the orange line has to go over the top. So the orange line goes over the top, which means the orange line has an even digit on it. Because the orange line, one of these is a two. Don't know which one, but one of them is a two. Ah, OK, here's a lovely point. The orange line hasn't only got even digits on it because it's got those three digits on it to, cr to, cr to traverse the green snake. So that means that both odd and even appear on the orange snake. Now, if that's true, we must be looking at an odd difference on the line. Now, can you have a difference of three on this snake? is the next question. How would you get at, no, you can't, because how would you, how would that get out of box one? There's no way. I, I'm going to contend that because you run, you're going to run out of Sudoku digits. If you make this a one and have a difference of three, a difference of three, the next digit is now impossible. You can't do it. And obviously this can't be a one because you can have four on both sides of it, something like that. So. So it's not a difference of three, a difference of five will be even worse. So, the, right, so the orange snake has a difference of one on it. And one of these is a two. <laughs> and if it's got a difference of one on it. Oh, this is beautiful. Right, this is beautiful. I don't know if this is how you're meant to do this, but this is my way of doing it. Right, that's not a two. Because we've proved there's a difference of one on the orange snake. That square now would have to be even by, because we've got difference of one to there, difference of one to there, so that's even. And it can't be even because it can't be two, four, six, or eight. So that's not two. So this is two. And now by Bishop's coloring, we know exactly the coloring of the snake. So we now know that's even. These two are both odd. Boom. Now that square, bother. Bother, rather, bother, bother, bother. Can be both two and four, apparently. That's very annoying. Sorry, I thought we were going, going to be on to a winner there. Um, hmm. Sorry, I thought I thought I was going to be, I thought I'd been clever and I just haven't been. Um, oh, no, I can now I can still be a bit clever. Where's where's what is that digit now by Sudoku? Because that's odd. 
So the two in the top row has only got one position to go in. That's in the middle of a line that's a one-stepping line. So that's a one-three pair. Oh, and that can't be one. Because, because if it's one, the next digit is two. We've already put the two on the line. So that's three. <laughs> this is one. One is in one of those squares. Two is two. Oh, two is on two is on the orange line. Oh, that feels wrong. Oh no, that's fine. Sorry, I was getting confused with the green line. So two, is that the right? It is the right bishop's color. Okay, so we don't have to fret. We don't have to fret. That's still possible. Right. So what does that mean? We've gone two one two three. So the next digit has to be a four. But it can't be there. So it's got to be a four in the corner. No song, but it feels like it's song worthy, doesn't it? We, we should sing. Uh, I was trying to do this. What was that thing from the text adventure? Thorin sits down and sings about gold or something. I don't remember. Uh, right, so now we've got to go to a five, which must be beneath the four. So five must be here. Five is an odd number. And then we must go to a six. And the six can't be there. So we must go. Oh, this is gorgeous. So that's six. That's six. Uh, those are both even. I don't know if that's on the path, but I do know that we, the path continues to there. Um, and now, what do we know? One, seven, eight, and nine. Are in these squares let's label that up one of those is going to be that digit which is going to be a hugely important digit to understand the parity of in fact eight isn't in the isn't in these so these these are both odd digits so that we have now understood its parity but ah but we don't know whether green steps into even digits or not although that we've, we've got so many even digits in the puzzle it's, it feels very difficult to me not perhaps impossible but i was going to say very difficult for this to have be a one stepper because it would, it would it would need so many even digits to in fact how could it do that how could green how yeah here's a good point Okay, I've changed tack again. Sorry about this. I'm jumping about a bit. But green, if green is a one, is if green has even digits on its line, then the second digit after this odd digit is even. Because if it's odd, then we're stepping up in, in even numbers of digits and the whole line is odd. So the second digit is even. So how do you get to an e, a valid even digit from the green head of the snake? You can't go there because that's on the orange snake. You've got to go there. So that's, oh, actually, now I'm changing my mind. Then I could use that one, could I? Oh, bother. No, sorry, it might work. I didn't spot that. In my mind, I'd hypothecated this six to that snake, which is total and utter nonsense, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, no, you can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Um... But that, but if that, if this is on the, if this is, if that is even, if the, if the green snake goes like that, it would have to go like that. Still can't quite disprove it, I don't think. Four, where is four? Four is placed in box four. Eight, can I place eight as well? No, not quite. How many, actually, let me just double click. So I've done all the twos. I hadn't realized I had. I've done all the fours. I've done all the sixes. Yes, I've done all the eights. No, I know I haven't done all the eights. I've done five eights. Bother. Naughty eights. Very naughty eights. There's an eight in one of those two by Sudoku. There's an eight in one of these two by Sudoku. And OK, and what's going on with my orange line? My orange line needs. Oh, oh, this is bad. Oh, OK, no, sorry. I was going to say what goes on for my orange line from the other side. Well, that's a, actually a very valid question, isn't it? Because. We can't go to a one in one of these squares because the next square would be a two and we can't have we haven't got a spare two. So we are going to a three which can't be there, that's on the yellow snake. It can't be above it. 
So that's a three and it's on the snake. So that means we now need a four on the um we need a four on 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 the blue on the on the orange snake sorry which has to be that four i think and now we need we either need a three here or we need a five and we're going to have to somehow attach to this as well feels very difficult to get from to get this working without using this square i'm not saying it's impossible but it feels difficult because if if we don't use that square this has to come down here into a 7 it has to go down one more into an 8 and then it could go to a 9 because it can't go back to 7 but then it can't attach there. Yeah, this, this square is on the orange snake, I'm going to now claim. By dint of the fact that if it's not, you just can't connect the orange snake up. Oh, that's a funny noise. Um, because you can't go over the top. You'd need an even digit that was correct polarity. You'd have to go this way and the, the numbers don't work. So that is on the orange snake. Now, now that had an implication, didn't it, for the green snake? Because the green snake now can't get out of this box. So the green snake is only odd parity. Now, if that's true, the green snake has to drop there and go there. And we know that the skipping of the green of the green snake, which is in the orange colour, which makes it hard, is either going to be two or four. Six is too ludicrous to consider. I mean, if we can't, we can't go three, nine, three. We get, the weird thing is you can actually get to there, but uh, no, hang on. This is still going. Oh, this would be comedy. Three, nine. No, you can't. Three, nine, three, nine doesn't work. There's two nines. I just thought it was too ludicrous to be true. So if it's a stepping of four, three, seven, three, seven that's total nonsense as well so this is a two-stepper so this square is either one or five this square is either three or seven yeah and we've got the sort of bishop's move thing going on haven't we um but we could go down to the one ah but if we've got bishop's move what bishop's color oh that that's beautiful i'm going to claim that's a seven by bishop's coloring of this snake because again, you can see, or I can see, or I can feel, that to go on a two-stepping snake, every cell that's on the same bishop's colour as this cell on the green snake is a three or a seven. Um, and the other bishop's colour must be a one, five or nine. It's for the reasons we've been talking about. Well, that's, that is on the same bishop's colour as this. So that has to be a three or a seven. It doesn't seem to be able to be anything other than a seven. So that's a seven. We can't go here because we'll have to take an even digit in. So we must go to here and that must be a nine. This is beautiful again. It's so clever. Um, so this is the start of the green snake, which now must go to a seven again. Well, it can't be there, can it? So it must go there. That feels right. <laughs> so well that, that means that's a three and it doesn't tell us what this is it does tell us that's orange um okie dokie or can i do this column but i can where's one in column three there where's five in column three here is that useful well, it does give me the parity of this um Four, five, seven, nine into these squares. That's not going to be helpful, is it? We know, we know so little about the odd numbers in general. It's actually quite exciting when you get any of them in the grid. Um, I mean, I'm conscious of the fact this could just go five, three, one, three. But proving what it does is a different thing altogether. 
7 has to be in one of those two squares in box 5. So 7 is in one of those two squares in box 8. What about the top row? 5, 7, 9. Let's see if we can do anything with that. That's not 7. No, this is, this is not how to do this. I've got to focus on the snakes. Okay, hang on. This is a 6, which is on a one-stepping line. So it's got to go here, and it can't go to a 5. So that's got to be going to a 7, which puts 8 into the box. But we worked out, didn't we? That if we went 7, 8, 9, we can't connect to the 4. So we have to go... We have to go through this row 4, column 2 cell. And then we need a 5... Yeah, I mean, this is a 9 now, I've noticed, by Sudoku. That squares a something. That squares a 1. Oh, that's going to be helpful for this line, isn't it? So we can... Let's do the parity shading here. Do the parity shading there. This is all parity shadable. 8 we've not placed. In. We've not placed 8 in row 4 somehow. But we, we're on this square on a one-stepping line. So we must go to the 5. And then we're... That can't be a 4, and it can't be a 6, so we must then... So we have proved the shape of the orange line, finally. It wasn't easy to do it, but we have done it. Now, we've got a 5-7 pair here. We've got a 3... Oh, oh no, I've, broke, I've broken it. Ah, no, I haven't broken it. Good grief, that's horrible. That's a, that's a horrible moment. But look, this has got... This is a... This, it, we're going from here to here. So if we establish a difference of two, we obviously couldn't go straight down, but we could wiggle around the world to go one, three, five, seven, nine. It would actually disambiguate everything and work. We can't have an eight stepper for obvious reasons. So that's what we have to do. We, we actually learn everything about box seven as a result of the yellow line. That's beautiful. I can't really see what I've done there, but it, it, it is resolved. So this is a seven, nine pair. Um, Bother. So 7 is here now. 7 is on the, the pink or the purple line. That's quite exciting. Okay, these are 1, 3, 5. Oh! Well, hang on. How can that work? This is 1, 3, 5 on this purple line heading into a 7. So it's a two-stepping line in that order. So now that square, I think, has to be a 9. I don't think we can go... Uh, actually, that's not true. No, that's not true, what I was about to say. You, you might be able to go around there. <laughs> oh, oh, no, my goodness. No, you, you have to. You've got a one here. So you don't go into this. Oh, that's that's bonkers. Look, watch. I saw this possibility and sort of discounted it in my brain. But look, you can't go from seven to one. That's a six-stepper on a two-stepping line. So we've got to continue going like that. And that place is nine here. That place is nine up there. That place is nine here. That place is one here. That Right, that's weird. So we go three, one, three. That's a seven, that's a five. So that's a seven, that's a nine. I'm tempted actually to try and do the Sudoku here. I think that might be in some way in some ways, the path of least resistance. That's a seven. This is a one, three pair, which we can fill in. That's a seven. Um, that's got to be a three. That's got to be a five by Sudoku. So this is an eight, nine pair. We can fill those in. That gives us uh, a bit more parity shading. Uh, we haven't put eight and what's the other digit? Five into the top. So five has to be there. That's got to be eight. That does the Sudoku. Right, so now all in theory we've got to do is work out how on earth this all closes up. <laughs> so, okay, the orange line. What did I do there? Whatever it was, I didn't mean to do it. Ah, what did I do? Okay, that's fine, I think. I'm not actually sure what I did. Sorry. So the orange line there has to go up. I haven't done, oh, well, but I can now do the green line. Look, it's got, it's a two-stepping line. 
So it is forced. It is. It's just a big U in the grid. Oh, in fact, in fact, have we now done it? Suddenly, I think we might have done it. What a puzzle that is. That's not it. Who put three stars for that? I mean, that's crazy talk. It's taken me an hour and a half nearly, although it was a long introduction. And I don't even know it's right. Let's, let's click tick. Yes. 47 people have done it in 10 days. Well, it's not a mass. Well, Marty's puzzles are very popular with good reason because they are sublime and works of genius. And that is another one. It's bonkers. It's absolutely incredible that you can solve that from those rules. And it's funny, as my brain started to warm to the task, I started to be able to feel some of the interactions a bit better. I got totally stuck down here at seeing how this part of it worked. I don't know what the cleanest way was of seeing that, but I couldn't do it. Um, but anyway, that is the puzzle done. I think it is a five star puzzle. Um, and I'm very relieved to have got through it. It's brilliant, Marty, as usual. Let me know how you got on in the comments. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.